Hey, welcome. Okay, this is going to be the very first video in our series of vector statics. I'm actually really excited about this because statics is actually one of my favorite uh, topics in engineering. It's a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy this course because I really, really did. So we are going to start our conversation around vector statics with some fundamental ideas and things that we need to kind of solidify before we can jump right into solving statics problems. And so the study of statics is really derived from uh, mechanics or the study of mechanics. And mechanics, very, very simply, is really the science of studying and analyzing uh, different bodies in different types of conditions, whether they are at rest or in motion. And really, the study of mechanics is divided into three parts. The first being the mechanics of rigid bodies. And spoiler alert, this is where we're going to study most of our topics on vector statics. It's going to be the mechanics of rigid bodies. Uh, secondly, it's going to be the mechanics of deformable bodies. And finally, the mechanics of fluids. Okay, so generally speaking, the study of mechanics is really divided into these three kind of sub areas. Now, rigid bodies is where we're going to focus on uh, in this course in statics. And rigid bodies are simply bodies that do not deform when they are subjected to external forces. Now, realistically, you know that if you apply a large enough force to some sort of body, it will deform. But just to keep things simple and to understand what vector statics is all about, we're going to assume that all of our bodies are rigid and they do not deform. Now, if you want to go into deformable bodies, now we're talking about the mechanics of materials. So what we're really doing is studying when forces are acting on some sort of a body and that body is starting to deform. Now we need to take into consideration the geometry and the different materials and like the material composition of that body and how it's behaving with respect to the forces that are being applied on it. And that is not what we're going to cover in this course. Uh, that will be in the mechanics of materials courses or like st strength of materials. Uh, again, we're just studying rigid bodies. And finally, the third kind of subset of mechanics is the mechanics of fluids. And fluids is actually divided further into a uh, different sort of studies, uh, that being incompressible fluids, uh, compressible fluids, and of hydraulics. Now, we're not going to get into any of that here. Obviously, this is vector statics, not fluids. If you do want to learn a lot more about fluids, I do have, at the time of recording this video, uh, two other series, the physics of fluid mechanics and fluid mechanics on my channel, so you can definitely check that out. But for this course, vector statics, we are going to start right here, the mechanics of rigid bodies. And when we study mechanics, there are a few very basic concepts that we use to study and analyze uh, mechanics. And they are as follows. The first one is space. The second one is time. Third one is force. And the fourth one is mass. OK, so when we talk about space, I'm not necessarily talking about outer space. But what I really mean is that these rigid bodies or these particles that we're going to be studying and the forces being applied and all that sort of stuff, we need we need to represent a location, right? The location of the forces, the location of the body. And so when I say space, uh, what I really mean is just the position of all these things. We need to understand the positions of the forces and the bodies to understand mechanics. Okay, the second concept is time. And time really just represents when a particular event is happening or has happened or will happen. So in the case of mechanics, we want to understand how long it might take a certain object or a particle to move a certain amount or rate, rotate a certain amount. And that rotation or that translation usually happens within a particular time frame. And so that's how we get different quantities like velocity, which is really the change in distance over a particular time or even an acceleration, which is the change of velocity in respect to time. So time is very important in the study of mechanics. And then thirdly, we want to talk about force, right? Force. All these forces. What is a force? Well, a force really just represents a particular action of one body onto another. So let's say you are standing on the ground. Uh, you have a particular weight, and that weight is being exerted onto the ground. 
and the ground is reacting with an equal and opposite force to keep you from falling through the ground. So let's say you weighed 100 pounds, the ground is, is going to exert an equal and opposite force of 100 pounds to keep you in equilibrium. Now, I really want to study this concept of force in the study of mechanics because this is going to be very, very important in vector statics. Now, a force, at least in this series, is going to be defined as a vector, which simply means that the force has a particular magnitude and it's being applied in a very particular direction. Both those quantities are needed to represent a force in vector statics. And of course, the point of application, which is where the force is being exerted on onto another body. But again, we need uh, a magnitude and a direction for this force factor. And the way that we're gonna represent a force vector in this course is gonna be with a little arrow on top of the uh, variable. So here I have an arbitrary variable called f, and I drew this little arrow on top. Uh, that represents a force vector. So this is not just a magnitude, but it's a magnitude and a direction. Now, if I just wanted to represent a magnitude, I would draw that same variable or write that same variable, but without the little arrow on top. And so this right here is just a magnitude, whereas this is a vector. And then finally, the last uh, concept in mechanics is mass, and mass is really just the amount of matter in a particular rigid body. And we're going to use this mass in a very, very famous equation. You might have seen it before, and that is F equals MA. And notice a couple of things. One, we have our mass quantity there represented uh, with the variable M. And notice that our force and our acceleration are also vectors. Now, we're going to get into this equation a little bit later, but I just wanted to introduce it here and give you a more properly defined uh, version of this equation as it relates to vector statics. Okay, so we're talking a lot about vectors, uh, force vectors and acceleration vectors, and I want to spend a little bit of time really defining what a vector is. So I did say that a vector uh, right here is something that's represented with a magnitude and a direction. Let's say you had a particular vector and I'll just uh, call this vector, I don't know, B. Now this vector is useless if it doesn't have a direction and a magnitude. So if it's just one or the other, it doesn't tell us enough information about how this uh, quantity is very helpful. So when we say that a vector must be represented by a magnitude and a direction, what we're really saying is that this vector b needs to have a magnitude, and let's just say it was 12 newtons, and it also needs to have a direction. And you can see that if I drew um, a couple of axes here, so I have the y-axis here, and then I have the x-axis here, the horizontal axis, you can see that this vector b makes a uh, certain angle with the horizontal axis, and I can just uh, label that as theta, and let's just say that theta was, I don't know, 25 degrees, whatever it is. So this vector B has a magnitude of 12 newtons and a direction of 25 degrees with respect to the horizontal axis. This is a proper vector because, again, we defined a magnitude and a direction. Now, we'll talk about this a little bit more in depth, but uh, intuitively you might be able to see that this vector B has, well, the vector is, is acting along, you know, this line at 25 degrees from the horizontal, but you can kind of see that this vector uh, will have a component along the x-axis and it'll also have a component along the y-axis. And we'll get into components a little bit later, but again, just wanted to introduce that topic. The main point being is that force, or vectors, I should say, uh, have a magnitude and a direction. Okay, finally, so how do we represent forces on rigid bodies? Because that's pretty important in the study of statics, right? All these forces, all these external forces are acting on particular bodies. How do we represent those forces? Well, for one thing, we are going to model rigid bodies as particles. And these particles are going to be placed at the center of mass for a lot of these rigid bodies. We'll get to calculating where we can find the center of mass, but for now, to keep things simple, anytime we have a rigid body, and a bunch of forces acting on that body will represent the rigid body as a particle, a, a very single 
place in space that we can apply all these forces to. And two, just like I said, these forces will act on these particles. And finally, we are not going to really be concerned about the geometry of the mass bodies yet, but we will be a little bit later on. Okay, so I know this is just a bunch of words. Let's actually see a very, very simple example of vector statics and how we can represent those forces on a rigid body. So let's say, let's say you had a box, and I'm going to draw a box right here. And on this box, we're going to apply two forces. One is going to be a, a force of four newtons acting to the right. And to the left, uh, it's going to be three newtons. So there's four newtons pushing or pulling the box to the right, and then there's three newtons pulling the box to the left. Now, remember, we are going to model this box as a rigid body. And more importantly, we're actually going to model this box as a particle. So when I say we need to model things as a particle, what I'm really saying is that this box right here, instead of it actually being a box with a length, a width, and a height, I'm just going to model that as a single point. It, that point is going to have the same mass as the box. But now when we apply these forces of four newtons, you can see that um, these force vectors are being applied to the single point right there. So now if I asked you if you knew that there was four newtons of force acting to the right and three newtons acting to the left, what would the resultant of these two forces be? Well, intuitively, you could see that if you have four newtons acting to the right and three to the left, you're going to end up with a resultant of one newton acting to the right, right? Just four minus three is one. So our resultant force, our resultant force is going to be equal to one newton acting to the right. And I just draw a little arrow pointing to the right to represent the direction. And so you can see why direction is so important in vectors. The resultant really tells you that the box is going to get moved to the right and not in any other direction. If you had four newtons acting to the right here and three acting this way, the resultant is going to be one and it's going to be moving to the right. If I just said that the resultant is one newton, well, that tells me the magnitude of that resultant force, right? It's one. But that doesn't tell me any more important information. It's not telling me which way the box is going to move. And so that's really about it. Uh, you should congratulate yourself because you just did your very first vector statics problem. And of course, it's a very, very simple one. But this, this really just, if we can represent forces on rigid body correctly, we can solve any vector statics problem. So I hope you're excited. Uh, in the next video, we're actually going to talk about uh, Newton's laws and how they apply to vector statics. So I will see you guys in the next video.